Hello everyone, in this video what I'll be covering is how to connect to a MySQL database in PHP. Before we can add, update, or retrieve information from a database, we have to create a connection to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a file that we can include into any other PHP file that needs to add, update, or again retrieve information from the database. So if we go back to PHP my admin from our previous tutorial, we created a database called PhoneBook, then we created a table called Contacts, and then we added several fields such as first name, last name, phone number, and zip code. So in order to add more records, or in other words, in order to insert more data or access data in this database called PhoneBook within PHP, we first have to find a way to connect to this database from our PHP file. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is go ahead and save this file in a new folder. We're going to call it phone book. And for the file, we're going to name it config.php. And I'm just going to hit save. And the next thing that I'm going to do is write another comment that just says create connection to database. And next I'm going to show you the syntax for connecting to the server. So in a comment again, I'm just going to write syntax and I'm going to say MySQL underscore connect. Then open my parentheses, double quotes, the server name. In my double quotes, put a comma, open double quotes again. We're going to have username in my double quotes there. Another comma, open double quotes, and then password. Then lastly, end it with a semicolon. So as you can see here, we're using a special function or a special name for actually connecting to the database. And here in a moment, I'm going to show you what to input into these different fields. So we're going to create a variable. That's going to be called, let's say, connect. I'm going to set connect equal to my SQL underscore connect, what I just wrote above. And for most people, the server is going to be called localhost. If you're not sure what the server name is for your live web hosting account, just contact your web hosting provider and they should be able to tell you that. But for most of you all, it's going to be localhost. So in a way, we're going to separate that by a comma. We're going to put the username. And if you remember from the previous tutorial, I said if you're using XM, which we're going to be doing in these tutorials, by default, a username and a password has been set. Again, if you go to the getting started pop up, you'll see username has been set to root. And by default, we don't have a password. Now, if you're in a live web hosting environment, again, if we go back to what I showed you in the previous tutorial, we created a user called Robert. So if you was in this live web hosting environment, you was trying to connect to this particular database, the username for you would be, in this case, rss2q underscore Robert. And the password would be whatever password you set for this user. So going back to our file here, since I'm using XMP, I'm going to say root. And since we don't have a password, I'm still going to type my double quotes, but I'm not going to type anything inside them. Then I'm going to close my parentheses and then next on the new line, I'm going to write or die. And we're going to say connection to server failed. Now, all this or die connection to server failed means is if when PHP executes this line of code, if it cannot connect to the server by using the data that you just input it here, meaning maybe we type root wrong, maybe we type 56 here. And that's an invalid user and maybe the password is wrong. It's going to display this statement that we just typed here in the case that it can't make a connection. So you can type whatever you wish to here. I could say Robert is nice or something here. But just to help you with troubleshooting or debugging, if you see that problem, you know exactly where to go. You know exactly to come to this line of code and figure out, well, maybe something here I typed is wrong. So in a way... We're storing this into a variable, all this information in a variable, because there may be times where you want to use this connection in other places within your code. And this will make more sense when we get into future tutorials. But in a way, that's the connection to the actual server. Now we need to create a connection to a particular database, meaning if we go back to PHP MyAdmin and I go home 
as you can see, we have different databases, right? We have blog, and then we have main blog, MySQL, then phone book. Well, in here, if you notice, we, we haven't indicated what database we want to access. So now I'm about to show you the syntax for actually connecting to a particular database. So in a comment, I'm going to write syntax, I'm going to say MySQL underscore select underscore database or DB, DB stands for database. Then I'm going to say double quotes, database name. This is where the database name would go. Then a comma. And then I'm just going to say connect. And my parentheses and then a semicolon. Going back over this really quickly, this is a special name for actually selecting a particular database that you wish to access. And then within the double quotes here is the database name. So for us, that's going to be phone book. And then you have connect. The connect part here, as you can see, is using this variable that we just created up here. So that's why you want to store it in a variable because you wouldn't want to have to type all of this every time you wanted to connect to a particular database, right? So it's easier just to store that information in a variable. So now let's just go ahead and actually make the connection to that database. We're just going to say MySQL select underscore database. And as you can see, when I'm using these special names to lighten up as a different color as well. So that's another way you can make sure you're typing something correctly if you're using this text editor. But in a way, the database name for us is phone book. And then we're just going to type connect. And as we did above, we can use that or die if, if there's a problem connecting to this database. Maybe we type the name incorrectly. So I'm just going to say connection to database failed. So if we go back over this again, now you see the method for connecting to a particular database. First, we connect it to the server here, and then we finally connect it to a specific database here. Now, let me quickly show you how to actually close a connection to a database. So first, I'm just going to write a comment that says close connection. And if you want to close connection, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to write my SQL underscore close, and then I'm going to put in connect. So that officially closes the connection that we just opened up here with these lines of code. Now, normally when the script finishes executing, it automatically closes the connection. So this isn't really something you have to worry about too much unless you're really getting into complex scripts. But I did still want to expose you to it in case you ever needed to close it. I normally don't use it in my scripts, but again, it's there if you need it. All right. So before we end this tutorial, another technique that a lot of PHP programmers use is instead of having the actual name of the user and the the password here, you may have some variables set for those different fields. So for example, I may have a variable called user and I'm going to set that user to root. Then you may have a variable called pass and we're not going to have a password in this situation, but if you did, you may type the password there. Then you might have one called database and we'll set that equal to phone book. Then we may have one called server and we're going to put localhost there. So now when we come back down here where we actually typed out localhost root and no password and phone book, we can just type the variable. So what I mean there is we can just type for this case server then for root we can type just user. Then again for here we can just type pass. Then if we come down here as well, we can change phone book to let's do you can also do this. This will work fine too. Just put it as database and have it within the double quotes. That's fine too. So if it's not clear to you what I'm doing here or why I'm doing this, let's say again in the future, you need to change this information. So for example, if our username root has a new password or say, for example, we finally add a password for the user root, we can simply just type that password here and we know that it's updated in the rest of our code below. So this is just another way, I believe, for making it easier to manage this file, this configuration file. If you ever needed to update any of your database or your user or password or server information, you can simply do it from these four lines of code. So the next thing that I'm going to do is let's change this password back to what it was. 
And then in my browser, I'm going to go to localhost, PHP basics. We put it in the phone book folder and we named it config.php. So as we can see, nothing is displayed, which is a good sign because if we don't see anything, that means that we made a connection to the database just fine. And the way that you can verify that is let's go back to our PHP file. And for root, let's type instead of root, let's type something we know isn't the correct username, like 56 and put seven there as well. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go back over to my browser, refresh. As you can see, it says connection to database fail. So if we come here, we see that connection to database fail, probably because when we try to connect to the server, which is coming from here, it used an invalid username. So if I change this back to what it's supposed to be and hit save, refresh in my browser, that message goes away. So again, that's why in your PHP file where you can use the or die, you want to make sure you're typing something within the parentheses just to make it easier for you to troubleshoot. If something ever went wrong, you would be able to easily come in your file and have something to reference and figure out what's going on. So that does conclude this tutorial. So hopefully now you understand how to create a connection to a database as well as closing a connection if you ever needed to. So definitely be sure to take the online quiz at thephpbasics.com to make sure you understand these basic fundamentals. And I will see you in the next video.